All right, guys, how's it going? Uh, my name is Destin Dancer. Uh, I had a request for a, uh, a walkthrough of how I edited my photo of this lighthouse from Acadia National Park. <clears throat> so I'm going to do that real quick. Uh, I hope this helps some of you guys. Um, it's hard to say if it will, but I don't know. I don't consider myself an expert in editing, but this is how I do it if anyone is interested. Um, sorry if I sound a little congested. I just got home uh, late last night, and I was out in the rain the last couple days there, so I think I'm getting a cold. But anyway... So this here is the photo, uh, straight out of camera, how it appears. You'll notice that it was shot in JPEG. Uh, they haven't released the RAW processing for the X-T3 for Adobe Lightroom yet, so I'm still working in JPEG, but surprisingly, the JPEGs out of this camera are exceptionally flexible. I'm, I'm pretty impressed with them. Um, anyway, so here is what the final output looked like on my edit the first go-round. I'm going to attempt to come close to that again. Um, every edit's a little different, so it might look uh, a little bit different than that, but we're going to see what we can do here. Uh, so let's get going. So like I said, here's straight out of camera. So the first thing that I always do is, um, I actually, this is going to sound really amateur, but I hit the auto button first and just see what it gives me because uh, Adobe has gotten really, really good with giving you something that looks nice. And obviously it still has a long way to go, but it was a good a good start in balancing tones and bringing up the shadows in the foreground. Um, the reason the foreground was so dark on this is that I, these, these hot spots up here in the sky were blowing out when I was doing my long exposure. And I had to basically make the foreground dark. I didn't have a, a dark enough ND grad to darken the sky and get a light foreground. So I elected to, to edit it up in post. Um, that being said, uh, next thing I'm going to do real quick is just apply a crop, and I know, just based on having done it before, that what worked best for this was an 8x10 crop, and I liked having it cropped in just a little bit here, and I kind of like something eh, roughly about there, so we'll go ahead and crop that. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is actually bring the exposure way up temporarily and up the contrast. And this allows me to more easily find spots in the sky, uh, dust spots on the center. I was outdoors changing lenses a lot, so I ended up with a lot of sensor dust. Uh, one of the cons to mirrorless cameras is that you don't have a mirror in the way to keep dust off the sensor, so you have to clean the sensor a lot more often. And I'm right here, I'm just using the spot removal tool real quick to go through and find sensor dust and make sure that that is all... All clear. A uh, tip to doing this is to make sure your screen is clean before you start doing it, because otherwise you'll be trying to remove dust that's actually on your screen and not the photo. Um, I've done that a few times. It's kind of annoying. <laughs> Alright, so preliminarily that looks good. I think there was only a couple spots that I found the first time around on this as well. So I'm going to hit the enter button, get out of that. Sensor dust is cleaned up. I'm going to bring my exposure and contrast. I'm going to just actually just hit the auto button again, bring it back to where it was. And from here, I don't really like how dark the image is, so I'm going to boost the overall exposure. Um, really, when I edit, a lot of what I do is just to to play around. Let me turn on the highlight alerts. This little arrow up here will turn on highlight alerts so that if you go too bright, well, theoretically, yeah, you see right here how it's alerting me that the, the highlights are there. So if I were to bring the highlights up, and eventually it'll tell you if you're blowing out, losing detail. Um, again, back to where we started, and I'll just slide the exposure up a little bit here until I kind of like the look of it. Um, you'll notice as I do that, I lose detail in the sky. We'll take care of that in a few minutes here. Um, so I'm only blowing out the light here, which I'm really not worried about. There's not much you can do to preserve that detail anyway. Um, so here I'm going to boost my... Yeah, I don't like that. I'm going to bring the contrast back up a little. And then some the foreground's looking pretty good. A uh, little flat still, but we'll add some contrast and some, some tone texture into that in a minute. Uh, this is just a gradient filter. So I'm going to lay this over at an angle here, just kind of rough. And we're going to use this to add detail to just the sky selectively and avoid the foreground. So uh, here I think I want to pull this exposure back just a little bit. Add in some contrast. Um, bring the blacks down. Bring the clarity up, and hold on, I'm editing the wrong way. Let me delete this and start over. So, let me stretch a new one of those on. 
make sure there we go now we're right in this guy so I think this exposure needs to get pulled back just a hair uh, I'm gonna bump the contrast I'm gonna bring the blacks down uh, clarity is gonna get bumped quite far uh, as well as dehaze dehaze is kind of the secret tool you see how this just adds obviously if you push it too far it looks very fake but dehaze is one of those new things that selectively adds contrast to the midtones, if I'm correct. So it'll kind of help you to boost that sky and and get it to look a little better. Let's see. So I'm kind of liking the way that looks. Um, pull the highlights back just a little. And now, one of the things that I'm noticing as I do this, I've got the sky looking uh, about how I want it. Um, if you compare it to the, the final edit of the other one, it's pretty similar, not quite as dramatic, but, but I still like this. Uh, and the crop's a little different. Like I said, this edit will be different than the original. Um, so one of the things I don't like here is that my, my key uh, focal point in this photo is obviously the lighthouse. And... It's not where my eye is being drawn right now because the lighthouse is not the brightest point. Um, so what I'm going to do is, like right now, the sky above it is brighter than it, and these rocks below are brighter than it as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to selectively bring these rocks down a little bit and make them a little bit darker. And so what I'm doing is just brushing on a selective adjustment mask here. And if I hit... O, you'll see this red mask pop up. That's a keyboard sh shortcut. It's the key O, and it brings up the uh, the overlay so you can see what you're masking. And now I'm just going to pull that exposure down just a touch. And I don't want to make it look dark or fake, but I want to make it so that it's, it's balanced more with the lighthouse. And then in turn, I'm also going to zoom in here, and I'm going to add a second uh, mask over the lighthouse itself. And... The nice thing about this is you don't have to be real precise with it because what I'm going to do is I'm not going to bump the exposure on this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bump up the whites. And therefore, any of the stuff that I brushed over on the trees or anything that's dark isn't going to get boosted. It's only going to boost the whites, which will make the white house or the, the lighthouse itself brighter without raising the, the darker values around it. Um, and I am going to boost the exposure just a touch. I'm also going to bring the shadows up just a a little. So I am going to affect some of that stuff that I brushed over, but you won't even notice it in the final photo. But see how I'm starting to get that red clipping alert there? I don't want to I don't want to go so far that I start losing detail in the lighthouse because then it's not going to look appropriate in the final product. So I'm going to push just far enough to bring it and make it brighter without blowing out any detail. And now if I zoom back out, you'll see the lighthouse is a little brighter than these rocks. So your eye gets drawn where you want it rather than to the foreground here. Uh, the next thing I'm noticing is that uh, the sky here is, um, if you look at my other edit, uh, the sky is a lot darker out here than it is over by the lighthouse. And I did that intentionally in post to, again, draw your eye towards the lighthouse. Um, so what I'm going to do here is come back to this new edit get out of the brush here and I'm not liking how contrasty this is there's a little too much going on I think that looks a lot better just draw that back a little um, so what I'm going to do here is selectively bring down some of the sky with another selective brush adjustment here and it, it's gonna be a very subtle change it's not gonna be anything big and again I want to see what I'm masking uh, if I reverse this, I can erase this area here so that it doesn't affect that. And now what I can do is just bring this exposure down and just a maybe a fifth of a stop right there. And it's just enough to make it brighter over the lighthouse so that your eye gets drawn there without it looking unnatural, at least in my opinion. Um, and really, so we're getting close to being done. The only other thing that I would change on this is I don't like how you're losing a lot of detail down in the shadows in the foreground here. So I'm going to use another uh, selective adjustment down here. I'm just going to brush on across the bottom, and so you can see what I'm masking. There's the overlay. And all I'm going to do here is boost the shadows up just a little bit just to bring some detail into those rocks. And so now I think this is pretty much my final image. Um, 
what you've got is turn off that highlight alert so you can see what it looks like without it. Um, what you've got is something where I've manipulated it from the original image into uh, this. Ah, Siri, shut up. So if I go over to this, and this, so this is the original, if I take this back to uh, what it looked like originally, so this would be the straight out of camera photo, and this will be the edit that we just did. If I actually compare those side by side, you'll see uh, the change. So this was straight out of camera, obviously underexposed, uh, intentionally so in this case, and very bland. Um, but with a little bit of finesse and editing, you can make it into something that's completely different and stands out from the crowd. Um, so again, like we talked about on the comments thread on Facebook, uh, uh, basically don't get discouraged that your images straight out of camera lack a little bit of punch. Um, no camera is going to do this in, in straight out of camera. Um, and you pretty much have to edit and add all that punch in post to get something that stands out from the crowd. Um, if any of you guys have any questions, feel free to ask. Uh, I hope this helped you to some degree. Uh, have a great day.